Hi. <laughs> okay, so it's day two. We're actually on our way back out to Messick's. Uh, we decided to leave a little later today because I had some things that needed to get done, like uploading a video and sleep was very important. And we actually ate something this morning. Correct? Yep. Okay, so we did that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're heading out to the Keystone Farm Show out at York. Uh, after I go to Messick's, I have to drop off some parts out there so that the guys can put them on the baler. Um, yeah. So, I will have to talk about the, a little bit of what's going on in a, you know, a little later as far as the pickup header on that baler and other things. Uh, it's just one of those really hard to film situations. You know why? You want to know why it's hard to film in that situation? Why? It's hard to film in that situation because I have two mechanics and God bless them, they're really nice guys and they are very, very knowledgeable. Uh, but they hate the camera. I would love to just set the camera up and forget about it for four hours and watch those guys ding dong back and forth on that baler inside and out. But I can't because they don't want to be on film. So, I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got to work with, and, uh, you know, I really have to say that if you buy a Krone Baylor, these two mechanics are the guys that know more about those machines than probably the guys that put them together. That's really important if you're going to buy one of these machines. Uh, the, uh, and the reason I say that they know more about these machines than the guys that put them together is pretty simple. Uh, the guys that put the machines together, they know new parts that go on. They don't know what breaks. They don't know what causes the failures. They don't really know how to uh, rectify a problem that causes a baler to break or causes a baler to do things that are not normal. Uh, these guys... Uh, Gerald for sure if the baler's doing something that is kind of not normal from what it was when it was new Gerald will tell you over the phone oh you need to do this this or this and boom it's fixed uh, yeah so I'm kind of driving back to the farm to get these parts and that's why my commentary is happening now but the uh, uh, there's some parts on the baler that were replaced as upgrades, and they're failing faster than the originals. And, of course, the guys that built them at Crone, uh, they just said, here, this is how it goes together. Gerald is going to replace the piece that is wearing out faster, uh, and he is going to make a modification, which is not what Crone said for him to do in the first place. But he's done it on other balers, and it seems to outlast the original. So... He knows a lot about these balers. Anyway, if you're in the area at Messix and you want to talk to Gerald about your Crone Baler or anything like that, he would be more than glad to talk to you about it, just not on film. So I am pulling into the shop now to get the three pieces that I forgot about yesterday so I can take them out to Gerald now. Right? Right. Well, we get to go right in the shop. Look at this. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so we unlocked this bitch, right? Yep, cool. Whoa! I just chipped your paint. Did you just do that? No. You did not just it chip did. it again. It chipped it. <laughs> That's why you have that little chicky 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 thing. I'd like to see it real quick. <laughs> you lost your hat and everything. Oh, it's all filthy now. What's the matter with you? <laughs> what did you do? See it right there. Your 
fire. Cold paint, cold. You better get your feet off of that stuff. Are you still filming? Yeah. Why? Because you chipped my car. Paint. I didn't mean to. Cheap key of paint anyway. Shut up. You're mean. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'll fix it up. Where's your little Okay, it's day key? two, and I have just stopped by here to take a little bit of the video work. They are putting in a warranty claim on this pickup header. As you can see, there's some things that need to be taken care of. Uh, yeah, for the most part, there's they're doing all kinds of little things here and there, like that. There's a seal that went bad that was leaking inside of this housing, which is there on the ground. Uh, what else was there? Just several little things that they're doing. Um, they have a checklist, which I won't get into too much, but I'll show it to you right here and how thick it is. It's this thick. So there's all these checklists that they have to go through and that has to be done. Um, the trouble that I had with these guys, this is the original, as you can see, it's been welded a few times. They have replaced it with this guy, and you can see the difference in the thickness of the steel. I will lay that on there, maybe you can see that. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that they're doing. They have the, that one there is totally different. So, and I don't know why, I never really had any problems with that one until the last day that I bailed. Um, so they're just they're just doing all the upgrades that need to be done to it. Uh, this obviously is bent. I showed that earlier. Uh, I, they did find another broken, a little broken piece that needs to be replaced. Uh, that I replaced once already. It's a uh, for the scale. Just a little T, and uh, which is pretty simple to, to fix. It's just they don't have it. And I'd like them, I'll show you where that is, Gerald had his camera, but it's right up here, and they've totally changed it from this year's to last year's model. This model from the new model is very different, but right there where that spring is, there's a little connector, and you may remember that from another video, but they've changed that. Uh, they've changed this totally around. This cable here now follows this line back, and it doesn't go even up there. They've changed a lot of stuff around. So, what they're going to do is actually remove that, move the cables, and move it out of the way so I can't get caught there, which makes me happy because I don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, new spring on the other side, that one's bad. Uh, new eyelets here, the wear that's in this eye, you can see it right there is pretty bad, but they're going to change that out. You're putting new eyelets in, so that should work out pretty good. Uh, just a lot of little things going on there. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, so when this machine comes back it will be right where it belongs and I often wondered what was in here and I didn't realize, I mean we greased it and <laughs> didn't realize what was in there but there's grease zerks on these and we greased it all the time but there's actually just chain couplers so uh, Gerald was actually kind of pleased to see that there was enough grease in there uh, because a lot of guys just don't even grease them. Uh, I just talked to the Crone guy and he was thrilled to see that this baler was taken care of as well as it was. Because I guess a lot of the balers that he sees, like this here, is just dust. And uh, the balers that he sees are caked with wet, watery crap. So, anyway, uh, I am going to get out of here for now and. Uh, I'm going to take off to the Keystone Farm Show, and uh, I guess I'll be filming a little bit over there, and the rest of this baler will go uh, done, the work will be done without me here. Uh, yeah, one more thing. See that little white plastic thing up there? Those were replaced, so they wear a little bit, but Gerald didn't say that they were too bad. He says they were worn maybe a, an eighth of an inch on either side. And you do need to attend to those. He said it wasn't awful. It wasn't bad. It was good. So um, they're just doing all this little minor work. So next year when this thing comes in to the farm, goes to the field, it'll be just like brand new. Uh, they're Like I said, with the pickup, they did a warranty claim. And it will be replaced. It'll be replaced under warranty. Well, there we go. 
Okay, so Teresa was given this awesome opportunity to climb up on top of the offices at the far end of this shop. And you can see my baler there at the upper left-hand side of the screen right now. Uh, those big sprayers, there's three of them in there. Um, yes, they're very big, very expensive. Uh, that Kubota, somebody wanted to know what was wrong with that Kubota. Well, I, it was explained to me that this was the first attempt for Kubota to put on uh, highway equipment for mowing roadsides and things like that and they were having troubles with just about everything because the tractor they applied those parts and attachments to were too small. So I'm going to run this stretch of video twice just because I got a lot to say and you know it will be better if I run the same video twice. Going from the fans at the top of the shop, they're big ass fans, I believe they're based out of Kentucky, and yes, they do move the air around in there quite nicely. Um, the reason that I sent my baler in was two, two things. Uh, Crone offered to do an assessment of my baler. They really have come together with Messix and said, hey listen, this guy uh, has a YouTube channel and he can get our equipment out there and you know uh, better than we can and it's true because I reach more people than Crone North America does but anyways they're they're doing their job and I was thoroughly 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 impressed by uh, the knowledge of Gerald and his work his his other yeah the other technician I can't remember his name I feel stupid but you know it is what it is but anyways what is going on in this shop is not broken equipment. So you're seeing a lot of orange and blue because they are a Kubota and a New Holland case dealer. They don't deal with John Deere. Um, and these things aren't broken. They're just being maintained. This is the winter maintenance season. So, and reasonably enough, uh, if you bring a piece of equipment in, I believe Messix charges you an assessment fee of two to three hundred dollars depending on the piece of equipment that you're, you're um, sending in there. And then they go ahead and uh, do the work that is necessary. Uh, if you say go ahead, at the least it's going to cost you two to three hundred dollars, and they will give you the opportunity to repair it on your own. Uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, Crone came together with Messix, and they're doing this uh, this work for me to get publicity. And believe me, if they were not doing a bang up job, I would not give them positive feedback on anything, but they're doing a great job. Everything that I've seen, uh, the technicians are thorough, they are spot on, and there's not a rush at this time of year, which makes uh, winter maintenance season the best time of year to have your equipment maintained by a professional other than yourself. Uh, I've never done this before. I, I've always done my own work and have been uh, thoroughly pleased with what I did, but it's amazing how much I missed because I don't know what I'm looking for. The great thing about it is I have my camera and I'm able to see, plus I get that winter checklist, which is great because then I can do it myself in the uh, in the fall after I'm done making hay, or I could just send it back to Messix and have them do it all over again. Of course, um, I don't think that I'm going to get this opportunity again, but Crone may come through again next year and say, hey, you know what? Um, this is going to be a twenty to 25,000 bale assessment, and they may want me to do the same thing again, and I will do it. I think it's great. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this series. I have some equipment demonstrations that I'll be showing tomorrow and the next day, maybe over the next couple of days. I don't know, but I've got a lot of footage, and it needs to get up there, so thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, One Only Farmer. Don't forget to check out uh, my Patreon account. It is there. The link will be in the description below, unless I forget again, which I normally do. And don't forget to check out OneLonelyFarmer.com for clothing. Uh, the site is going through a revamp where there will be a lot more stuff. And it's going to be cheaper. Yes, you heard it. Cheaper. And guess what? Better quality. Thanks again. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.